Hi, Hamza here. And my name is Abdullah, and today we're going to be talking about physics in sports. We're talking about physics in baseball. What? No, we're going to be talking about physics in cricket. I don't think so, dude. It's baseball. Cricket. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Before this goes any further, I have an idea. Let's play a game of rock, paper, scissors, and the winner gets to choose the sports. How about that? Alright, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, rock. Oh, yes! Okay. I reckon it is! Cricket is really similar to baseball. We have a bowler, we have a batsman, and we have some fielders. And this is how a real cricket ball looks like. You have threads in the middle, which is called seam. It creates turbulence in the air, which passes over the ball, and also divides the ball into two parts. We will be using taped tennis ball to help you understand better. There are basically two types of bowling. One is the swing, and one is the spin. Swing is when the ball moves in mid-air. Spin is when the ball bounces on the pitch, and then it moves after that. Take a look at this video at the spin and Hamza will explain you what this is all about. Got him! That's well ball, Shane Warne. What a wicket that is. He's really teed him up and he has struck just before lunch. Let's have a bogey with this test century. He was playing well enough to get a test century today. That one spun a long way. Now that was a white turn, wasn't it? Spinning a ball is a god gift to skill. It's the twisting of the fingers along with the wrist to make the ball spin is the right technique. Now what happens is when the spinning ball hits the ground, it deviates in the direction it was spinning. Now that happens because of Newton's third law which is every action has an equal opposite reaction. When the ball hits the ground, it exerts a force in the opposite direction of its spin, causing the ground to exert an equal force in the opposite direction which is the direction of the spin. So, the more you spin the ball, the more force it exerts on the ground and deviates more. And that's why you need your fingers and wrists precisely to make it spin at the right amount. Since spinners use only their hand techniques to throw the ball, they usually have a small run up. But when it comes to swing, fast bowlers in cricket take a really long run up to gain that great momentum, throw the ball at a really great speed so it can gain that moment in mid air. Let's take a look at this video and see what Abdullah has to tell us about a swing. Bottom! What a ripper! That was the one they needed. He went over the wicket and he's got him. On defence, he saw that one right up there and his uh, aggressive instincts took over. But that's a beautiful piece of bowling. Swing is basically nature's work. The air passing over the ball is the key to swinging. When a bowler delivers a ball, he will put the seam in an angle from the batsman. That is because as the ball is traveling forward, the air hits the ball at this point and separates into two. On the right side, the air travels smoothly over the ball and leaves it quickly. But on the left side, the air is traveling smoothly along the side of the ball until it hits the seam. The uneven surface of the seam causes turbulence in air. Now this turbulent air sticks to the surface of the ball comparably longer than the other side. This creates pressure difference between the two sides. Where the lower pressure is on the turbulent side causing a force to act in this direction, making the ball swing towards the direction the seam is facing. Now imagine yourself as being the batsman. If I put the seam in this direction, the ball will swing away from you. Now if I put the seam in this direction, the ball will swing towards you. All right, all right, it's enough for science. Let's get in some action. Sounds good. Awesome, awesome. Bam, bam.